Hey everybody, welcome back to Tai Chi Live. We're gonna continue our principal practice today. Last week we talked about being rooted and grounded. And this is rooted and grounded part two, but it's really about the intention and purpose of the movement. So how does that fit in with being rooted and grounded? Well, let's talk, well, I'll remind you what we talked about last week where being rooted and grounded, we're in firm contact with the ground, but we're not glued to the ground. We feel roots growing out deep and wide. We are stable in our stances. We have a wide enough stance and a deep enough stance. It's also about letting our bodies relax into the movement. And this is where it's getting more into that intent and purpose of the movement. Tai Chi is a martial art. It started as a fighting style. Now, of course, you would not approach someone in a fight and go like this, right? Of course not. It has moved into a movement meditation where you're doing slow movements. However, those movements have a purpose. They have a root to them and understanding the root of these movements helps you be rooted and grounded in your Tai Chi. Understanding the intent and purpose of a movement helps you to do it properly. If you are thinking about a fighter, think about a boxer in a ring, that boxer does not go into that ring all off balance. And it does, he doesn't go into the ring um, being all tense, right? A boxer is very loose and he's very aware of his balance. And balance is all about being rooted and understanding your center, understanding why you're doing what you're doing. So rooted and grounded is very much tied into all of the other principles that we've been talking about. So let's go through just a few movements. We're not gonna go through all of the movements of the uh, 24 short form. However, we're gonna go through some of the movements and talk about the martial arts application or the intent and purpose of the movement. So I'm going to step back just a little bit and we're going to do preparation. We've done this one at the beginning of each of our seven minutes of serenity, right? Think about being rooted and grounded. Think about those roots growing deep and wide and being balanced, understanding your center. Where is your energy? So if you look at this movement, it's very gentle and it's Tai Chi. If you imagine someone coming at you like this and you speed up the motion, you can break their arms and control them, basically. So as you come up and down, you're actually controlling someone who's trying to get at you. Now, as I talk about these different martial arts applications, I'm going to call to mind one central idea for these motions. That doesn't mean that that's the only application for these movements. There's actually several different layers of movements, several different uh, ways you can interpret the intent and purpose of the movement. So I'm gonna simplify it. We're just gonna talk about one of those applications as we go through the movements. Pushing Chi is another one that we do often in our seven minutes of serenity. If you bring one foot out in front and you have your hands at the level of the Dantian, remember that's two inches in from the belly button, two inches down. You're bringing yourself forward just a little bit, letting the hands float up and out, and then bringing your hands back. If you think about being rooted and grounded, you want to lower your center of gravity just a little bit 
and you want to make sure your stance is wide enough to be stable. As you're doing your pushing chi, if you think about the intent and purpose of this movement, you're pushing something away from you. You're pushing something to remove it as a barrier. It could be a door, it could be a car, it could be a person. As you're pushing this barrier out of your way, you have to be rooted and grounded or you are the one that's going to be hurt or moved, not the barrier. Think about if I were to do this to try to open a door, it would be very ineffective, right? If I raise my elbows and, and, and try to push at a door like this and I'm not balanced and I'm not relaxed, I can't open that door. I can't push a person away from me either if I'm all off balance. In pushing chi, the purpose is to push. You're going to use that energy from the ground. You're going to be stable and you're going to push. And we haven't really talked about breathing too much, but you're also going to breathe out on that exertion. As you push, you're balanced, and then you can bring that energy into that barrier so that it gets out of your way. We're going to do part the wild horse's mane in our seven minutes of serenity on Friday. So let's learn how to do it first, and then let's look at what it's really doing. I want you to bring your weight over to this side which means this hand is high and this hand is low. Step out, bringing that bottom hand up and the top hand down. So let's bring it back. Step out, bringing that bottom hand up and the top hand down. Good, now if you start to think about incorporating the rotation that we've talked about, Rotation actually just allows your body to relax and allows your arms to just open up, right? Let's do it on the other side. So if we bring our weight over here, this hand is high, this hand is low. Now you step this other foot out, bring the bottom hand up and the top hand down. Good, part the wild horse's mane. Stepping out, use a little bit of rot rotation and just open up your arms. Relax into that movement. One more. So now if you think about the intent and purpose of this motion, imagine that I have someone who's aggressive towards me and I want to bring my hand against their neck. Now in when I teach self-defense classes, I always teach my students, think about hard against soft. And you have a hard surface here on your hand. This is a soft surface on an opponent. If I want to bring my hand to their neck, this might possibly be what you're doing with your part the wild horse's mane. I have to use that rotation to allow my body to relax and to get maximum power. Rotation is power. We talked about that when we talked about our um, principle of rotation. If you think about the intent of this movement, you have to use the power behind that rotation. You're moving from the Dantian. This is how they all start to move together. A motion that is kind of uh, more difficult for people is that repulse the monkey because you have to go backwards in your repulse the monkey. So what I want you to do first, and I'm just going to kind of turn to the side a little bit here, and I'm going to bring one hand forward, the hand, the foot that's forward, that hand is forward. The foot that's behind, that hand is not all the way behind me. I'm not opened up like this. I'm opened up 
at just a little bit more than that 90 degrees, okay? I want you to bring this back hand up and over and then pull that front hand back. That's all I want you to do for now. Bring that back hand up and over and pull that back hand back. So all I'm doing, if I face the camera here, I'm just pulling back, right? Then with your repulse the monkey, you actually have to step backwards, right? You bring it up and over, and as you cross, you actually just change your position, correct? I'm gonna face the camera here. Backhand comes up and over, stepping backwards, and I've changed my position. By understanding the purpose of this movement, it actually helps people learn how to do this movement easier. Because if you think about it here, imagine an opponent has my hand. Someone has grabbed me in the store and they're trying to pull me, they're trying to make me go with them. I have this hand free. This hand is in my opponent's grasp. This hand is free, so this hand is the one that needs to move. As it comes forward, again, I have to use that rotation, moving from my dantian, and push them away, break that grasp. This helps people understand which hand to move in Repulse the Monkey and which way to turn. Oftentimes, as new students are learning Repulse the Monkey, they'll be like this, and they'll be like, how am I supposed to turn and do it? Use my front hand. But if you understand what you're doing in Repulse the Monkey, you understand that it's that back hand that's free and that's how you repulse that monkey. Now, part of, part of understanding the intent and purpose is understanding that this is not a Hollywood choreographed fight, okay? When we do Repulse the Monkey, we often do Repulse the Monkey in three or four movements at a time. So if you think about that, we step back, Repulse the Monkey, and then we step back again, and then we might step back again. Now, if that were a choreographed fight, that would look pretty silly. Right? I push my opponent away and then I just leave my hand there for them to grab. <laughs> and then I push it away and I leave my hand there for them to grab. That's not what you're doing in Tai Chi. So I don't want you, yes, I want you to understand the root of the movement, the purpose of the movement, so that you can continue to learn and get better in your Tai Chi. But don't think that it's a Hollywood fight where it's, oh, my opponent's here, and I do this, and then I do this, and then I do that. And that's not what's happening. <laughs> One of the other movements I want to teach you is called brush knee. So I want you to bring your hand over to this, or bring your weight over to this side, and you're holding your ball again. Step out. Now brush this bottom hand across, and the top hand comes out. That's brush knee. Again, let's try it on this side. Step out, brush knee. Good, let's try it on the other side. So if my weight's over here, this hand is high. Step out, brush knee. Remember to add that rotation. Think about lowering your center of gravity just a little bit. You're rooted, you're stable. This one I find is easy for people, even if they're not used to fighting, even if they're not used to martial arts, this one's easy for people to see what you're doing, right? You're blocking something low and you're hitting something at the same time. Something might be coming here, it's a block, and then it's a strike. What's important to note with this movement is that you don't want to allow this bottom hand to come behind you. What this does here is this makes me off balance. And remember being rooted and grounded, you're all about being balanced and you understand your center and you're able to relax. 
this, where I've made impact with whatever's coming at me and I've brushed it aside, then I'm striking higher. If I do this, I'm off balance. And that's not the intent of what I want to be doing because now my opponent has the advantage. So as you do your brush knee, remember you want to keep that hand in front. Don't let it trail behind you. Go behind you. You're trying to get to your opponent. Your opponent's not behind you at this point. They're in front of you. So you want all of that energy going forward. There's a movement um, that I always laugh. We've done it before, but I always say it's um, deliciously violent. <laughs> And that's kick smash and box the ears, right? With kicks, that's fairly obvious what you're doing against an opponent, right? You're kicking them. I was laughing because I remember when I was a little girl, I used to wear cowboy boots and I used to use them. <laughs> but in kicking, you have to be rooted. You have to lower that center of gravity. If you're too up like this, if you're too upright and you've locked that knee, you're not balanced and that kick will be ineffective. So you want to make sure you're rooted, make sure you lower that center of gravity, lift, kick. Good. Now let's try that kick smash and box the ears, lift, kick, smash, lowering that center of gravity and box the ears. Imagine someone coming at you. Imagine that you can stop their progress, take them by the shoulders, smash them against your knee and then finish them off. Um, it is something that it, you have to think about an opponent in a way of a moving target. No, it might not be the, ideal scenario to put all three of those pieces together. But imagine that at some point that might be. We have a couple more movements. One of them is called white crane spreads its wings. And in the long form, you get into this movement a little bit different than you do in the short form. But for the most part, this is white crane spreads its wings. I'm going to teach it to you. Don't worry. But here is the, at the point where you can see maybe a white crane spreading open, white crane spreads its wings. Your weight is very important in this. In where is your weight? Understanding your substantial and your insubstantial. The way that I like to talk about white crane spreads its wings is I like it to be more of a defensive, I'm getting away from someone who's aggressive towards me. At this point, I have lots of options, okay? I can kick, I can move back, I have punch, I have all kinds of options if I'm here and I'm also protecting myself, right? I in this position, I have lots of options with my hands and I'm protecting vulnerable areas. So white crane spreads its wings. If you think about that, I want you to just hold a ball right in front of you. Just hold. Now, as you turn to the side, bring one hand up and one hand down. Good, then come back to the middle, hold the ball, and switch to the other side. Come back to the middle, hold the ball, and switch to the other side. Good, now, as your weight is here, this leg is empty, it's able to lift and kick. As you turn, your weight shifts, you can lift and kick. That's part of 
putting yourself in a good position as a fighter is to give yourself options, right? And that's what I see white crane spreads its wings. It gives me lots of options as a fighter. We've done deflect, intercept, and punch in our rotation, seven minutes of serenity flow. With deflect, intercept, and punch, remember we have a fist. And in Tai Chi, we don't have a tight fist because we don't want our joints to be all locked up. I want your body to be nice and loose. So keep your hand as if you have like a robin's egg in, in the palm of your hand. When we punch, remember rotation is important because we, all of our power comes from moving from the Dantian. So we want to have that rotation in our deflect, intercept, and punch. So as we do that movement, we'll start, this hand has a fist, bring it over to the opposite hip. You're gonna step out. This hand is just protecting at this point, okay? What you've done here as you step out is Perhaps you've just cleared, someone is punching at you and you've stopped that punch. Now you rotate, you can grab hold of that person as you pull back to punch in and punch. Deflect, intercept, and punch. Remember it's hip to hip and then punch because that gets you that rotation. So let's try that again. Hip to hip and punch. If we try it on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go hip, start with the hand at the opposite hip. That's the one that has the fist. Step out, deflect, hip, intercept, opposite hip, or same hip, excuse me, and then punch. So let me try that one again. I had my words all messed up. Start at the opposite hip, step out. Good. Now bring that hand to your same side hip and rotate into that punch. Like I said, you could, we have a couple different ways to look at that one. I like to bring this one up because the elbow is a very good self-defense. This could be something where you're pulling that elbow out and clearing them and then coming in and punching. Doesn't really matter. What I want you to start thinking about though, as you do your Tai Chi is why am I doing what I'm doing? Because that's gonna help you be rooted and understand your Tai Chi. The last move that I wanna teach you is not actually a Tai Chi move. It's a Qigong move. And it's part of the eight strands of the brocade and it's called punch with intense eye. So I want you to bring your legs just a little bit wide and you're gonna bring one fist to your, no, bring both fists to your waist. Now I want you to punch out and this time I want you to be really tight, really tight with your muscles and make a mean face as you punch. And I want you to be very intense. And if you have to go, that's okay. You can do that. Punch with intense eye. Now, if you're laughing, that's not an intense eye. <laughs> Punch with intense eye. Bring it out and out. Okay, now relax. Bring your feet in. Let your hands relax. Come back into that preparation. It feels so much better, doesn't it? You have so much more energy flow when you allow your hands to be relaxed, when you allow your body to be relaxed, when you understand your balance. One more. I want you to take a nice deep breath in and breathe it out. Now, I wanted you to feel the difference between really being tense and really being relaxed. 
But I also wanted to teach you punch with intense eye because the intent and purpose of that movement is to punch away illness, to punch away disease, to punch away stress and anxiety, anything that's making you so that you're not the best you can be. And that's part of what we're trying to do with these Tai Chi live episodes is helping you understand Tai Chi to help you get rid of the stress and anxiety that we're all under right now. Punch with intense eye. Just imagine you're punching, punching away all of this, the isolation, the disease, the economic hurt, whatever it is. Part of what I want to do is give you some hope and help you so that you can be the best you can be. On Friday, we'll put these movements together into a flow, into our seven minutes of serenity. So it'll be a flow and we'll still talk back. We'll still talk about the intent and purpose, but you'll get to be relaxed and put these movements together. I hope you'll join me on Friday. I'll see you then.